Hello and a warm welcome to Your Career. Nice to have your company. Coming up on the show, how to avoid discrimination during the interview process it can indeed be easier said than done. Plus, good things come to those who wait. We'll speak with one fashion designer who thought she had waited long enough at the age of just 23. First off, though, you've got the perfect CV, tons of experience, prepared for every possible scenario, but for some reason, you just don't get the job. With such a short amount of time to make an impression, it is crucial to connect with the interviewer and leave a lasting impression. Well, the solution could be simpler than you think. Using stories in that interview process can actually build trust and credibility with your future employer. It doesn't indeed stop there. Storytelling can be used across the workplace for change management, employee engagement, as well as development. Joining me to discuss personal branding expert Jane Anderson and from our Melbourne studio, Gabrielle Dolan, communications leader with a specialization in business storytelling and proof positive with that little home uh, to her name already. Gabrielle, we might start with you. A warm welcome to you from Melbourne. Just talk about the, this, this idea, how it crystallised for you. What was the actual germ of the idea in the first instance for you to get involved yeah. in this? Yeah, actually I got involved in it probably about 15 years ago when I worked at the National Australia Bank and noticed in my change management roles there and, and senior leadership roles that the very good leaders use stories. So for the last decade I've been teaching leaders how to use stories to better communicate mm -hmm. um, and more recently I've just written a book around how you can use stories in the job interview process. Let's clarify, and, and Jane coming on this, you know, when mm. we talk stories are we effectively talking at parables that might not literally have occurred but they are, they're, they're morals or, or you're actually referring here to direct first-hand experience. You, you yourself have got experience with this. Yeah, I yeah. think it's, you know, it's first-hand experience. I think one of the challenges, we have this tall poppy thing in mm -hmm. Australia where it's not cool to kind of sell myself, so we hold back. Yeah. But stories are great ways to be able to um, help the employer to determine your character mm -hmm. and the type of choices that you make when you're in cert certain situations. Mm -hmm. And the idea of confidentiality around that, because to really hit home, how personal are you making that exchange? How deep are you really going yeah. in the detail? Yeah, look, I think it's pretty detailed and it's personal. You know, to give you an example, yeah. I had a doctor recently who she was trying to give the example about how she was really altruistic and yeah. she was in amongst, uh, you know, the um, uh, the cyclone that was in Vanuatu. Right. And to help someone survive, this person needed her blood type. Gosh. So she actually gave her own blood. Yeah. To help That's this person survive, yes. Yeah, so she was life saving. Mm -hmm. So you know, just a story even like that is really compelling, and it shows the type of person that she is. Gabrielle, let's just sort of move this into a business context. When it comes to you know, sort of not letting your guard down because you are professionally having to continue on in a role that might well be, in this case, quite senior to the person that you're imparting this to, what what are the what are the parameters? Well, there's always a case of oversharing, but um, I think people underestimate the power of vulnerability and they don't want to give too much of themselves. But as Jane said, the more personal you can get and you can show learnings, you can show vulnerability, you can show emotion, they're actually really powerful and, and they're actually quite powerful in mm. senior leadership roles. So, you know, there's a, there's a fine line between oversharing, but mm. I think um, people don't even get anywhere near that line. Talk to me about some typically recurring themes that the interviewee is likely to be you know put up to put up to answer yeah look the part, the, the part of the interview process, I mean, you've obviously, with your resume, you've ticked all the boxes of mm -hmm. skills and qualifications and experience probably to get to the interview um, process. So then it is, they're really looking for you, they're looking for your values, they're looking for you to expand on your capabilities. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they just go and regurgitate their resume, mm -hmm. but the interview process is to really find out if they actually want to work with you, if you've got the right values, what we call it is, you know, cultural fit for the organisation. So that's where stories can really help um, with that. Mm. Fine line, and some, some, Jane, this idea of being too honest for your own good. When, in, when asked, for instance, your greatest weakness, yes, you know, are you really going to, you know, put it on the line and perhaps uh, show something that's uh, flawed about you, which may then be, be remembered and may, may almost count against you? That's yeah. a fine line. <laughs> it's certainly <laughs> the most feared question. <laughs> And I think it's what, you know, the weaknesses question is really about two things. Mm. 
self-leadership and personal responsibility and progress. So when is something that, what is something that you're not great at, but what are you doing about it? And what have been the results so far? They're not looking for you to be perfect, mm -hmm. but your own insight into yourself and what action are you taking to do something about mm -hmm. it? And are you getting any better at it, really? <laughs> and I mean, is, is it totally arrogant to kind of brush that one off and, and almost say, to your point actually, you know, there were in the past and I've worked through these. Yeah, that's and right. Almost, you can have the list, but to actually have something here and now that you're conscious of and haven't done anything about, that's almost, again, weakness in itself, is it not? That's right. And for you to sit there and, as you say, you know, yeah. to go, oh, well, I've got this wrong with me and I've got that wrong mm -hmm. with me, then, you Begs know... the question, what are you, why, <laughs> why, why are you allowing that to just sort of to fester and, and, and not um, get out of that funk? That's correct. So, so it's all about what are you just doing about it? Because mm. at the end of the day, the weaknesses question is really about, for the employer, are you going to make me look bad? <laughs> right. OK. <laughs> Gabriel, just distinguish between the literal stories and the like stories. What do you mean by that in the book? You refer to those two different notions of the story itself. What are we getting at? Yeah, look, in the book I talk about the different types of stories you need and a lot of, sto a lot of people just go into um, reg um, interviews with just literal stories. And a literal story is, you know, g give me a, a time when you've managed a project and you'll give a literal example of when you've actually managed a project in a work context. But... There's sometimes when you haven't actually managed the project, but you could have similar skills. You might have organised the fate for your kid's school, or you might have organised a big protest to stop high-rise buildings in your street. And to do that, you've had to demonstrate all the, the same capabilities and skills required to manage projects. You've had to delegate people, you've had to engage uh, stakeholders, you've had to make sure things are done at certain times. So. Th those are like stories where you haven't literally managed a project, mm. but it's it's like it. And and they, these are really valuable for if you're entering the workforce for the first mm. time, so you don't have the literal work experience, or perhaps if you're coming back from a long extended career break and your work experiences are 10 years old and you feel like they're not relevant. So mm. it's thinking about um, not only work situations but personal situations you can share that not only demonstrate similar capabilities but also values that they're looking for. Jane, is there any kind of telltale body language or reaction when typically those responses are not hitting the mark and you'd be wise to actually just quit while you're ahead? <laughs> Stop labouring the point because clearly you're digging yourself into a hole. Uh, what do you typically observe? Yeah. Uh, if it's a panel, for instance. Yeah, look, panels are pretty daunting. So, you know, you can feel like you're in front of the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah. But I think one of the things that they look for is conviction. So mm. conviction will be, you know, you've got that sort of heightened awareness about what you're doing and you can delve deep into some mm. of the detail if you're challenged. Yeah. I think a panel can pick up pretty quickly whether you're making it up or not because mm. they'll press you. And if you're going, mm, um, <laughs> you know, that's pretty obvious you, got, you might be making it up. So yeah. it, they've got to be real stories because mm. otherwise you can't speak with conviction and then you haven't got the confidence when nerves kick in in those interviews. Mm. What about this other notion, J uh, Gabrielle, that, that, you know, in giving the story, you're actually giving them... Uh, some intellectual property, uh, the, the idea of ownership and, and parting with something that, you know, you fear that if, if they're a competitor, arguably, they might well use to their advantage, even if they don't choose you. You know, how do you make those lion ball calls when it is far from a given that you'll get it? Yeah, look, and, and sometimes you do get asked, and you know, I've heard lots of examples of people gone for interviews and they felt afterwards it was just a process for them, for mm. the interviewer to gain their intellectual property. Yeah. A lot of the times, you know, you might be asked, so what would you do? You know, we've got to implement mm. this um, technology system, how would you do it? Yeah. And instead of giving, you know, how you would do it, I mean, you'd... you'd come back with questions. It would be like, well, before I could answer that, I would need to speak to your stakeholders. I would need to get a bigger picture of what you're trying to achieve. Depending on what you're trying to achieve would determine how I would implement this. So it's actually been quite smart about how you answer that question, talking about the process you would go through as opposed to the outcome, which is probably what they're looking for. Mm. Sequels to what you've written. Gabrielle, I've held up your, your offering and as well Jane, but just finally, Gabrielle, we'll start with you. What are you working on beyond this one now? Because there's always something in the pipeline, isn't there? Oh, there, there absolutely <laughs> is always something in the pipeline. So the, the, the latest book um, 
is around storytelling specifically for job interviews, but mm. I'm currently working on a new book, which uh, the working titles is Stories for Work That Work. So beyond job, almost once you've got the job, how can you then share your stories in all different situations, whether they're presentations or in sales or with your leading change, and providing real examples of people that have actually used these personal stories to get their business message across. So I'm pretty excited about that. That should be out next year. And Jane? Yeah. Yeah. What's For me, so my book is called Confidence mm. and about how doctors can get onto specialist training programs. So if right. they're trying to get onto dermatology or urology and right. those types of things. Wow, specialist and some. Listen, we wish you well. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. insights. Thank Jade you. Anderson, the personal branding expert, and there in Melbourne, Gabrielle Dolan, communication leader, and that book, uh, Storytelling for Job Interviews. Let's move on. Really quickly, take a short break. When we come back, uh, from small town girl to global success story, we'll hear the career story of a luxury fashion designer next.